Oh. Okay. Live stream. Random live stream uh, that I was not planning to do. But this guitar's a mess. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Here we go. Uh, I don't know how well this will come across. Hopefully you can hear me. I don't know. But this guitar needs work and I thought I'd do a live stream about it because why not? Because it's bad. I hate trying to get stickers off guitars. Hello, hello, can you hear me okay? Just let me know if you can hear me. Cool, awesome. Okay, so just to let you know what's going on here. So this guitar was given to my sister by one of her friends. It's a Harley Benton standard series. And I don't really like talking about Harley Bentons, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, and it's terrible. <laughs> Lack of a better word, people have achieved. This guitar is, is not a good one right now. Uh, but hopefully will be by the end of this. So we've got fret, uh, sharp fret edges, bad frets, uncut nut. That's a big no-no. Um, it all works. Electrics are fine. It's top loading. Uh, everything else is fine. But everything's dry as a bone. The fretboard, it's kind of that weird kind of like not finished, finished kind of look. It's really, really weird. Uh, and I do apologise straight off the bat, people with tube, but I don't know how many, if you're leaving messages, um, questions for me, I will look up as much as I can and uh, try and, and answer as many questions as I can. But like I say, I, my main focus is getting this guitar to actually do something. Uh, it's filthy. There are layers of filth on this thing. Um... The big problem with this guitar is how much it weighs. This guitar weighs, must weigh, easily. I'm just going to turn that heater off. This guitar must weigh easily nearly 10 pounds. No word of a lie. This is the heaviest Telecaster I've ever picked up in my life. And it's it's just stupid. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. I have no idea what the body, is, uh, the body wood is. Uh, it's a two-piece body. Well, actually, it's not. It's a uh, one, two, four-piece body, I would say, probably. It looks like it's got veneer on each side. The neck screws are that tight in, I can barely get them out. This, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. This is 101 of how not to build a guitar. You know, you want to be able to get the thing apart without any trouble. But I'm not. I'm not winning here. Uh, where's my? Uh, where's, that, where's that drill bit? Um, I don't really know what shape the frets are in. Uh, this guitar has had a bit of play. Not a lot. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm going to power tools because I can't be asked. Um, to muscle through that. Okay, so there we go. So this was uh, bought from Cash Converters, as that's a Cash Converters sticker. And we've got something there, I don't know what that is, and I, I don't really want to put my fingers in it. God almighty. <laughs> um, I don't know what was spilt on this guitar here, but it, it's uh, kind of ugly. Okay, so one of the problems we've got here, people Tube, is these screws are too big. Well, the holes are too small in the body. Uh, so these screws are like, it, it, they're just too tight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill out these holes. Uh, technically, your, your, the holes in the body should never be tight. The uh, screws should be able to pass through the body uh, without any uh, friction. You shouldn't have to screw these neck screws through the body. They should just go straight through. Uh, the only the only place they want to be screwing into is the neck. Uh, that's very nice and clean there. Uh, the screws only want to be going into the neck. They want to be able to pass through the body. So I'm going to drill them out in a bit. So this guitar has had some play. I mean, you can see there is dirty finger marks 
up and down the fretboard. But it's that really horrible, like, not finished, finished finish. <laughs> but this, this neck is as dry as a bone. Uh, it's, it's ugly as well, people who are to ask me. It's a very ugly neck. The nut has not been cut either. The action at the first couple of frets is so high, I highly doubt you could play anything in tune up there. It's ridiculous. Um, this is stupid. Absolutely stupid. This is just not a good guitar. The volute down the bottom end as well is so big. Can you see that? I don't, you can see that. Look at look how big this this bit on the bottom of the neck is. That's just silly. Okay, anyway. Neck aside, let's just sort let's just sort this body out first, because it's a state. So I'm gonna use Mr. Sheen to clean up the clean up this guitar because it's filthy. What up uh, okay, um I don't know what these marks are on the back of the guitar. <laughs> There's all these kind of like little divots. Uh, well, they're not divots. They're kind of like scuffs in the finish. And I can't... They, they won't clean off. Okay, not a problem. Like I said, I don't know what the wood would be. It's definitely not basswood. And um, my betting is ash. Because it's really heavy. Uh, but I don't know, people tube. Like I say, this guitar is so incredibly heavy. I've never known anything like it. For a beginner instrument, that is insane. Oh, there's the scene. Um, that is, it's too heavy. You won't you, you won't want to give this to a beginner. It, it, would, it would kill them. Uh, also, in, in its present state, it would kill their want to even play the guitar. Um, it's just not very good. Uh, I'm going to try and get this sticker off the back as well at this time. Uh, by the way... This knife is not sharp, just so if anybody starts wincing out there and be using a knife, this knife isn't sharp. It's totally blunt. Uh, the actual edge on it is really, really thick. So, uh, yeah, don't don't worry about me scratching the finish. That's not going to happen. When am I going to release new music? Um, hopefully soon. When I, well, when I have time to record it. Let's put it that way. It's, it comes down to the time, and time is not something I have a great deal of, sadly. Uh, but, all is well. I have, we have lots of plans. The trio has plans, I have plans. Me, John, Joe, and Queenie have plans outside of a trio as well. It's all very exciting, let's put it that way. So, uh... Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I'm gonna once I get this uh, sticker off, people. Chair, I'm gonna use um, where is it? Lighter fluid to get rid of the extra gunk that's gonna be left on there. Uh, I'm also gonna try and do something with that neck. Um, I'm gonna try and somehow get some kind of Oh, well, I'm going to try my Crimson Guitars uh, fretboard restorative on it. I mean, <laughs> I don't hold out any hope that this guitar is ever going to be good, but we'll find out. Um, like I say, my sister was given this guitar, and it was just like, you know... I can't believe... I just... I can't get over the weight of it. I literally can't get over the weight of it. It's absolutely outrageous. It really is crazy. Crazy biscuits, I told you. Tells you all. Sorry, I missed I missed that. What was that? Oh, you don't have to do that, but oh, thank you very much indeed. But yeah, you really you really don't have to. I don't I don't mind. I can I'll I'll save up for one, but thank you so much indeed. I appreciate that. Thank you. I do need something like that though for when kind of doing out and about videos and and what he not is. Oh, get off me. I hate stickers. <laughs> well, I I don't hate all stickers. I hate stickers that do this when they don't when they just decide I'm not going to come up and I'm gonna cause you trouble. Nyah! Try and remove me, will you? Nyah. Okay. Like I say, this is not good. 
this guitar. Um, it, it, you know, I, I don't really know what the deal was. I don't really know what the thinking behind this guitar is. I don't know how old these ones are either uh, to the Harley Benton series, but this is a this is a at this point in time it's a bad guitar it'll i don't think it'll ever be a great guitar sadly and that pains me to say that i hate saying that about guitars but um i could eat my words i could eat my words and i don't know if i'm gonna be able to finish this on camera because i am getting hungry and uh i might have to stop and start the live stream i might have to stop in a bit uh go and get something to eat and come back and finish it in another live stream in a bit. But uh, I've been to the dentist today as well, people too. I've had a filling. It's, it's been a filling day, so uh, my face is starting to feel normal again. Oh, there we go. Nearly, nearly, nearly there. This knife is fantastic for this kind of thing. It really is. Okay, so there we go. Stickers off. Now all left with the is with the gross, horrible sticky re uh, residue, which we're going to remove now. Hopefully with lighter fluid. I'm not going to set it on fire though. I'm not Jimi Hendrix. I'm not that good. Um, let's just see if we can get rid of this horrible, sticky nonsense left. It's working. Slowly but surely, it's working, people of the tube. It smells nice as well. It reminds me of Zippo lighters, and I like Zippo lighters. I used to have a bit of an obsession. Well, what do you mean used to, Dave? You still do. I have a bit of an obsession with Zippo lighters, people of the tube. I don't know why, I just like them. <laughs> I hope this hasn't marred up the finish under that sticker. Well, the sticky. That's a really stuff, tough sticker, that is. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get in there now. Oh, what a mess. Okay. Ah. Okay, this is not... Oh, come on. Oh, God, it's so tough. It's so tough. More lighter fluid. More elbow grease. Yes. It's a really lovely colour, this guitar. It's like a blonde uh, Mary Kay almost kind of uh, looking finish. Like see-through blonde. It's gorgeous, but um, far too heavy. Far, far, far too heavy. Hand sanitizer works. It does indeed. Very true. I don't have any to hand at this point in time. So uh, lighter fluid it is. And I say we're getting there slow, but surely there's not much of it left now. Might have gone a bit overkill there with the... Uh, Light fluid, but that's okay. There's quite a lot of horrible gunk on this thing, I've got to say. I don't really understand of what it all is, but hey. There we go. Okay, that's about as good as it's ever going to get. It's uh, not the best, but the sticker's gone. And we're uh, all well and good again. Um, I need to look under that scratch plate at some point. But first, let's just cane this in this. Doesn't hurt the electrics. It's only Mr. Sheen. I do believe the neck uh, will need a shim. Uh, judging by what I've seen, uh, the strings that were on it were like, you know, gangrenous, basically. It looks like they'd been on, like, uh, a pirate ship for 25 years. They were gross. Um, so I do, I, from what I could see of that, the fact that the saddles are really high up and the action was really high, maybe, maybe it doesn't, but a lot of these, um, a lot of, a lot of bolt-ons benefit quite a lot from a shim in the neck. Some, some you don't need to, some you do. Uh, we will see, both people with tube. I'm going to get it strung up first and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look. I do need to get those holes drilled out though in, in, in the body uh, kind of before I start putting, putting it back, put the neck back on, so to say. What do you mean, so to say? What do you want about, you fool? Okay. 
it's a I'll tell you what it's it's a lovely looking guitar uh well the body is the neck looks bloody awful but um <laughs> it's a lovely looking guitar and it is a shame that it weighs so much uh it does look like ash uh the body does look like ash to me uh but again I, I don't know it it's really hard to tell um I can't tell if there's a veneer on top of the body and the back of the body covering up the seams. You can clearly see it's a four piece body. It's literally like one, two, three, and four. But I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, like I say, Harley Benton are not a, a guitar company I hold in very high regard for a couple of reasons, which again, I won't go into today, people do, because we'll be here all day. But there's a reason I don't really feature them. But I thought. You know, it's it's not really about them, this isn't. This is more about, like, you know, fixing up a guitar. Ugh, get them off. Someone's left all the... Why, why was there protective stuff on the uh, control panel? I don't know. I'll get it off in a minute. Okay, so there we go. I'll tell you what. The guitar's very happy. It's... Uh, it's a lot happier now than it was, I can tell you that, I can feel it. It's it's really important to maintain instruments. I mean, it, it's all well and good, but, you know, a lot of people will kind of just tend to leave them and let them kind of fester, but I, I really don't like it. it. You've got to maintain, you've got to keep, I reckon you've got to keep them clean. If you look after it, it'll look after you, that, that kind of deal, I, I, I think, anyway. What do you reckon, people tube? Like I say, I do apologise about not getting to any questions that are coming up, by the way. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just trying to get this done. Uh, like I say, I might have to stop the live stream at some point, go and get something to eat, and then come back and uh, continue A. But at this point in time, we're doing okay. We are doing okay. There's not much to do, but there is still quite a lot to do. I also want to see if the uh, fretboard can be... Uh, not necessarily cleaned, but um, sort it out. So there we go. Pretty good. It's nice and clean. It feels nice. It doesn't feel as uh, gross as it once did. I need to do your sides now. It's always fun cleaning it's people's gunk off guitars. Like I say, I mean, the guitar itself, when it's all together, looks fantastic. But the problem with that is it looks fantastic. It doesn't mean it is fantastic. And uh, that's the problem sometimes with these guitars is they tend to look great. <laughs> and sometimes they're not actually great. Anyway, that's the, that is so heavy. I mean, that alone is, uh, it's a Harley Benton guitar. It's a, like you can see here, people do, there you go. I don't know if that's backwards on the live stream. But um, Harley, it's a Harley Benton standard guitar. I mean, that, that body alone is easily probably about seven pounds, if not more. It's really heavy. Okay, I'm putting it over there. Let's try and do something with this neck. Um, what? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not a lost cause, this guitar, but it's, it's borderline. Uh, but I still want to... I have a problem with this, people tube. It's like, if a guitar is bad, I have to try and fix it. I have to get it to work. I have to at least try and get it to work. Okay, let's see if we can get any, some kind of moisture into this, this fretboard. Not really. I mean, like I say, the, 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 the neck's got this weird kind of finished, not finished look to it. And it's very, very dry. Like, extraordinarily dry. Like I said, I, was, I, I, I borderline nearly didn't bother documenting this, but I thought, well, I was kind of like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if to do, like, just, like, film it for a video. Because I've done quite a lot of videos where I talk about what I do on guitars and how I, how, how I fix them up. Um, wow, look at the difference in colour. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Look at the headstock. 
that's what the that's what the colour of the neck was. So we could actually probably put it all over the headstock as well, actually. Maybe. Would that will that work? No, the headstock's just gonna have to remain white as an albino frog. Yeah, this guitar is uh it's a bit of a sad case right now, I've got to say. I mean the frets don't need polishing, which is good because I hate fret polishing. Uh they do need sanding down the sides though because they all stick out it's really really nasty down the sides of a fretboard it's really really sharp um but that looks really good how much have i got of that left i haven't got a lot of my i need to order some more crimson guitars fretboard restorative because i go through it like the, nobody's business i might actually try and pour some on a bit, de bit dangerous this is there we go that's probably way too much but this neck actually needs it okay Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put that aside and go back to the body. There's not much more I can do with that right now. I'm going to let that sink in. And, uh, well, soak in, should I say. We'll come back to that in a bit. It's actually changed the colour of the neck. Uh, the, well, the, the fretboard area anyway. You can see how white that is. Uh, the neck itself is horrid. Horrid, horrid, horrid. It might need uh, re-carving. I don't know. We will see... I'm still getting used to these new fillings in my mouth. I really feel strange. As they always tend to. Okay, I'm just going to get another duster quick. Oh, my legs. They don't work. The day I actually have a bench to do this on, Peter Chief, it'll be a good, it'll be a good day, that. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to clean off some of the uh, polished smudges with the, the clean cloth. Also want to get rid of that. Uh, polythene stuff and then we'll get the scratch plate off and we'll have a look at the electronics see what the deal is like I say if I'm missing anybody's comments I do apologize um like I say I, 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 I just I, I want to kind of get I need to, I need to kind of keep my head down so I can get this kind of done it's it's looking better it really is looking so much better so heavy though that body is outrageous i would not want to be stood playing this guitar or sat playing this guitar for a long period of time uh, my main goal here really people choose to get this guitar to function as is intended you know i just want it to be a nice guitar to play um, like I say, it's not going to be a guitar you'd ever really want to sit down and play for a long period of time just because of the weight. But um, that's not really the goal here. I can't, I, I can't really do much in the way of weight relief, sadly. I wish I could. Um, I mean, it'd be nice to kind of route out under the scratch plate, but I don't have the ability to do that, sadly. I don't have the skill sets either to, to route. I'm not, I'm, I've never really done that. So I don't really want to get in there and do that. Anyway, um, let's get the scratch plate off. Actually, I'll, I'll do the control panel first. Let's have a look. So I'm expecting tiny little alpha pops and kind of usual kind of like green, blue, uh, red wires. Oh, we've got white and black wires. Yeah, I've got the alpha pots. Very clear. Oh, we've got a nasty bit of tear out in there. Somebody uh, somebody got a bit carried away with the router and went a bit too deep. Let's see if we can get those bits out of there. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to see that, Peter Tube. Maybe if, uh, no, you won't be able to see it. It's too small. Um, okay, I'm just going to try and get this um, polythene off. Accidentally hit the resist the uh, capacitor, a resistor, son, or whatever it is. I don't know. It's the tone control thingy, Bobby Dave. Okay. I get very upset when guitars like this come to me because because I because I love these things so much. When they're not kind of cared for or looked after and. Or even built properly, you know, we're not looked after at the factory, you know, n no one cared enough to even 
it was just put together on assembly line and shoved out the door and yeah there you go <laughs> it, it's like it's not really good enough in my opinion you know it's not because guitars they need looking after you know they they, they need that uh need the attention all can smell is zippo lighter fluid it's amazing shouldn't be um, i'm not sniffing it i promise this isn't kind of weird drug thing with dave simpson i could have smell it off the top of the guitar anyway come on that polythene has hold of this nut no, no, there we go okay come on off you come good boy drop that in there now don't we come back out here you okay so that's the polythene off get rid of that horrible stuff I've never had actually, I've never had a new guitar like a Telecaster um, with polythene over over the control panel. That's really strange. I've never never known anything like that. Okay. Okay, wiring looks good, soldering looks good. It hasn't been messed with, which is always a good sign. That's, a, that's always a good thing. So I've just got to get more more polythene stuff out from the screw. Let's put that back. Put that back in. And mm, fun one. I said the goal here is just to make it play and be nice, you know. And uh, it might be worth a video at the end of this Puma tube. You never know. You might you might see this guitar in the. Uh, I want to say not too distant future, but it, it won't be the close future. More stuff. More polythene. Get off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, it doesn't sound particularly, particularly great. It's a bit of a dull sound. I don't really know why Telecasters are voiced so dark in this day, especially with neck pickups. Um... You know, all the old Telecasters I've played have quite bright neck pick Well, not bright neck pickups, but they, you know, they're not as dull and as nasty as this one. Okay, uh, let's clean under there now and we can put the knob back on. Like I say, I, I, I don't like being negative about gear because, um, for all I know, like I say, this isn't my guitar either, Peeva Tube, so... Uh, I don't know what this guitar's future is because uh, it's not mine. Um, but I just I hate the idea of them being mistreated, even if they are not particularly great like this one. Because it, yeah, it, even even this guitar can be made to be good. We just need to we need to give it a bit of love. You know, it just needs a bit of love. in a weird place oh we got an, i think we got an infinity screw yeah we have we got an infinity screw there we go that's just gonna spin and spin and spin i'm gonna maybe, maybe dowel that maybe if i can be bothered and i said the main main goal is just get this thing to work and to play properly oh 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 that's that's bad I don't know if you can see this, people with tube. There's a huge bit of tear up on the finish under the scratch plate. You see that chip just there. Now, there you go. I don't know if that's from a factory or what, but that's nasty. That's, that's, the finish is gone and the wood's gone and it's definitely, it definitely looks like ash. Um, that's pretty nasty, that one. Pretty nasty. Yeah, let's just clean with this scratch plate. It doesn't look like anyone's ever had this scratch plate off. So, that leads me to believe that's from the factory. Uh, which isn't particularly good. Again, I don't really know much about Harley Benton guitars. Um... I had I've had a few run-ins with them. 
and they've never been particularly good run-ins, to be perfectly honest with you, people too. Uh, so, and again, I, I don't really like to promote them because uh, I, got, I got kind of messed about by the company uh, quite a lot. So I don't really like to promote their guitars because I think they're a bit... Well, they mess me about too much and I don't like to... You know, people have a finite number of chances and they burn all theirs up. But I, I just thought this would be interesting. Well, ho hopefully somewhat interesting. There's the infinity screw. Um, these holes are terrible. <laughs> They're too deep. Like the screw just grabs at the last second on the scratch plate. I mean, it's enough to hold it, but it's that's not good enough. Okay, there we go though. So now I need to drill through the body and I don't like doing this because I'm always scared that I'm going to ruin it. Uh, but we need we need to do that because that, that, that these screws, <sighs> screws are way, way too big for the, for, for the, for the body. It's, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So drill bits, do I have a drill bit that will fit? That's the question. Yeah, I should have easier. So, I want the, like I say, I want the neck, but uh, the neck screws to go through the body um, without uh, any resistance. They only want to be screwing the neck, but at the same time, I don't want the neck, uh, the neck, uh, the holes in the in the neck pocket here to be uh, humongous. I think that's about right. I would say that four point eight is too big. No, I would say that. Right, okay, I'm gonna go, I think that's, yeah. So, the holes inside here are 3.5, and I reckon they need to be a 4.8, so they need to go up a fair way, and we're just gonna do it incrementally. So, that is that one, isn't it? I'm, I'm missing my four, sadly. So, uh, we're just gonna go through with this. And I'm just gonna go real nice and slow. Thanks to Ben at Crimson Guitars, I learned that to use the drill backwards in this kind of thing and go through halfway on one side, flip it over, and then do it again on the other side. So drill's in reverse, it's not in forward. Guesstimate about where halfway is. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Do tover side. This is a bit more problematic because there's lacquer on this side. There we go. One done. Two done. Smokey. Three done. And four. Again, all done in reverse. Uh, none of that was in forward. So let's just check now. So yeah, still too small. Screw still doesn't go through. You never know, we might even go up even further. Don't want to touch that drill bit. It's going to be very hot. So uh, this is 4.8 now. Uh, I'm going to start on the back. I'm just going to go all the way through. I'm getting lazy. Mr. Path of Least Resistance, Dave Simpson. Well, Bone Idol, Dave Simpson. Okay, that's gonna have to go through. This one. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do those two from the front because they're not gonna go through. That's fine. There we go. And we're done. Right, so in theory, that should be the right size. I'm still grabby. I'm still grabbing. It's way better though. So we're gonna still go up. We're gonna go up to five. Let's see how that feels. 
I'm just gonna do one at this point in time for YouTube, just in case this is too big. Okay, so halfway through, in reverse on that side. That's the one. That is the one. It's still grabbing a bit, but I think uh, we should be okay. Oh, I've got the drilling forward. I think I'll be able to. Don't get away with it now. Yeah. Yeah. I can live with that. I mean, it, I don't know. Maybe I should go up next. My only worry is now is that I, I don't have much more increment on the old thingy. Uh, I'm just going to check it from this side. Oh, my drill set weighs you high. That is, that is about where I'm willing to go with that. Uh, if I go up to 5.5, I think it'll be too big. So I'm going to leave it there, uh, put some wax on the screws before they go in. Okay, so now it's reassembly time. Let me just check it. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the neck. Let's see what's going on with that. Okay, so our fretboard looks better. It doesn't look great, but it looks better. Um... Let's see if we can clean off some of the uh, fretboard restorative man. Oh yeah, I need to sand the sides down as well. There we go. Okay, that feels way better. It's smoother. It's got more and more of a, a kind of a... It's just better, let's put it that way. Also, people with tube, the nut on the neck is overhanging. Uh, on the high E side, it's overhanging slightly, so I'm going to sand that as well when I get to that. So that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. It's not not too bad. I mean, in all fairness, I think if um, this was my guitar, I think I would be lacquering this fretboard. Or at least kind of like giving it some kind of finish that is better than it is. But that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, I, like I said, I do like the fact I don't have to polish the frets because I hate polishing frets. Okay, I need to do the truss rod as well because we've got a bit of an up bow in the neck. So let's do that now. Actually, will that, will that fit? Question is, will the truss rod work? That's the question. It's still up bowed a bit. A long way though. I think somebody's messed around with the truss rod before me because that that nut feels a bit weird. Okay, that's about as straight as I need it. I don't like necks that are perfectly straight either. I, do, I like them when they've got a bit of relief. So um, I've left a little bit in there. Um, well, not much in there. It's a fraction off being totally flat, but I've left a little bit in there. So when the strings go on, it will put more in and then if need be i can always get rid of it with a truss rod uh because it just wants easy okay so i need sandpaper i need a sand block i got one of course this is the bottom of everything okay so these i've had these sanding blocks for years and this is how i just get rid of the, i'm just gonna get rid of the sharp fret edges Hey, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's do the other side. I'll buy that. That is literally all it took. There we go. It's simple as that. 
Uh, I am, though, going to quickly, quickly, quickly go up and down the sides with uh, a, a very fine fret rubber. Where is it? That's fine. There it is. So I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm not after kind of crazy perfection here. Yeah, and then the other side. I'm a very, very messy worker, as you can probably see. <sighs> Why not? Let's just do this. I should have done this before, really, but uh, before I uh, put the finish on uh, the oil on. Right. Cut it off. There we go. Spot on. Oh, very nice. The neck itself is quite big. Uh, it's not really a beginner's neck. I wouldn't recommend this to a beginner. Uh, if you've been playing for about a year or so, then yeah, I could I could recommend a guitar like this with a neck this size. But for a beginner straight off the bat to like to start to learn to play on this thing, no no chance. Absolutely no chance. Right, I'm going to sort this nut out as well now. So. Because it's far too high. Uh, I could easily put masking tape around this bit as well to uh, protect it just in case I slip with a file, but don't really need to do that. I can eyeball it. Spot on. There we go. I'm going to try. It's going to round off the sides as well. So I've got rid of that extra millimeter of nut on the uh, on the high E side of the guitar. The low E side is oh check this out, Pooh Tube. <clears throat> the nut's not even glued in, and never was. So the nut was literally just friction fitted uh, into the into the groove here. <laughs> Um, and I don't have any super glue, that's annoying. Um, what can I use instead? Oh, I got nail varnish in here. I think I have somewhere. I'm gonna use nail varnish instead, but yeah, so the nut was never actually glued in. <laughs> Again, not, 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 the, not a good thing. But because I can get the nut, the nut out now, I am actually gonna take this opportunity to file down the sides a little bit more so it's a bit more comfortable it's a bizarre shape okay sorted uh what the problem was there is well, oh, badly fitting nut. Uh, it actually fits in the groove really well. The actual groove cut in the neck for the nut is actually really, 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 really good. Uh, it does move, as you can see, quite quite easily, but um, it's pretty good. It's not it's not horrific. I've seen worse. I have seen worse. Uh, I really put some super glue. I didn't think that I was going to have to do this, so I didn't bother going out to get any. <laughs> Um, oh darn it. Okay, well, I can't do anything without this point in time, Pooja. I don't have any super glue, so I'm going to leave it for now and I will come back another time and super glue that in. So I'm kind of on the clock here. That fretboard's darkened off really nicely, actually. It's kind of, um, it's gone all right. And I say, now with the, with the, with the sharp fret edges gone, uh, it, it's, it's not bad. Like I say, it's a chunk. It's a chunky neck, but it's not uncomfortable. Uh, what I don't like is this huge volute down here. I suppose you call it volute. The volute up here is quite ugly as well. It's like a, it almost makes that top half uh, of the neck into a, a really sharp V, which isn't very nice. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's all right. Where's my uh, sanding block again? I'm just going to see.
what I'm doing there is I'm just smoothing it out a bit. The neck's not finished um, at all. It's uh, extraordinarily rough. And I've just got these sanding blocks here. This one I've had for absolutely years and is really smooth. And what it'll do is uh, not only will it clean off the gunk that's left on here, but it'll just give it a bit more of a nice kind of satiny look and it'll just feel nicer in general. There we go. Yeah, spot on, absolutely spot on. It's got rid of all the roughness to it and it's just really, really floaty now. That feels great actually, that really does feel great. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can hear the difference people of the tube, but this is, uh, this is what it did uh, sound like, if you will, it's quite rough. So I don't know if you'd be able to hear that. And then what, just taking those sanding blocks over is. Substantially quieter because it's smoother and it's nicer in general. Uh, I'm just gonna get these off as well. I'll use me a uh, thingy, where's it gone? Ah, <sighs> nightmare. I'll try and get these covers, uh, protective cover things off the back of the uh, machine. Heads. Like I say, does this guitar need a shim? That is the question that's going around in my head. I don't know. I really don't. We'll find out very, very, uh, we'll find out shortly. Uh, I'm going to string over gauge nines. Um, just because, like, you know, if this guitar goes to somebody who just wants to play it for fun. It doesn't want to. It, you don't really want tens on it. it do, I don't. I don't think this guitar will do very well with tens. It doesn't feel like it. it. Feels more like a nines guitar to me. Okay, so next done. Body's done. Let's put it back together. Oh, I need to clean the uh, neck plate. Actually, I, I do apologise. Uh, it's still got the uh, cash converter sticker on it. Where's my blunt knife again? There it is. I hate. The cash converters do this. They put their stickers on the metal bit. They've kind of learned now. They some the, what they do now is tend to put the sticker on like masking tape, and then um, put it onto the instrument. But this is uh, obviously not one of those times. Just leave you fun. I don't mind stickers on guitars. I really don't. Uh, I have some on my guitars, uh, but if you're not planning to keep it on there forever, <laughs> you don't want to go through this. It's not fun. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this gunk off here as well. So same deal, light fluid. You just burn it, see what happens. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Like I say, I do need to cut the nut when the strings are on. Uh, the nut slots are horrific. Uh, they're really, really not good. Basically what's going on at this point in time is literally the, the strings are just kind of sat on top of the nut. <laughs> and that's not, that's not it. That's not it at all. And it's really high. Uh, like supremely high, uh, so I doubt you'd be able to play open chords in tune. I really doubt it. Let's try and get some more of that off. There we go. Get in there, people. Tube. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. <sighs> Burn it, yes, mwah. Been possessed by Ben from Crimson. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Hey, there we go. Shiny salmon. Okay, so moving on, let's put this guitar back together and get some strings on it and see if we need to do a shim, which I'll probably do later on, maybe off camera if need be, but I don't know, we might have enough, we might have enough judge, adjustment. Where are the saddles? 
I've got a shimmin, it's going to bring them up. I'm going to put a shimmin uh, anyway. I'm just going to do it. Um, I don't trust the neck pocket at all. I just don't. So we're going to make a shim. I just, just looking at the saddles and this guitar, I just don't trust it at all. So I need my pencil. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So... Bit of cardboard. I know some people say don't use cardboard, but I've never had any problems with cardboard. Some of the guitars that I've shimmed with cardboard still have that shim in it. And everything's been fan. So, rough and ready version here, but. Bad scissors. Bad scissors, good shim though. There we go. So basically, that's that's the shim. You can uh, hopefully kind of see. It just sits in the bottom. It'll just bring the neck uh, angle up a little bit. And it should just make this guitar better to play. Fingers crossed. All right. Oh, cover Dave. Cover, cover, cover. See that people tube? Dave used his brain. And he should never ever use his brain. He should just do things and that way. We're not we're not gonna get anything going wrong. Okay. Next back in. Get rid of my fingerprints under the neck uh, neck plate. Neck plate. Come here. Get that on. Right, first screw. Here's my little Bosch. Oh my god, that's so much better. <laughs> Oh Lord, uh, the fun I had trying to get these screws out at the beginning wasn't fun. Let's put it that way. Okay, so what I do when I put necks back on is put the screw in till it's all nearly all the way in, but not, not all the way. I like to do the last bit by hand. Let me clear some space here. So, So now we've got the neck kind of like semi in. I always start on the top right. I tighten that till it's kind of like, kind of a little bit tight. Now I go to the bottom left. Tighten that one down. Not, again, not ridiculously tight. And then top left. I'm not after cranking on these things. They don't, they don't want to be super tight. And then bottom right. So I kind of go in this like crisscross band. So that one, that one, that one, that one. And then again, I don't want them to be super tight in there. I just want them to be on there. And that's spot on. I'll, get, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give it, uh, I'm just gonna check. I'll give it the fact that the neck pocket is cut really well for the neck. It's a great fit. It really is a great fit. Uh, I have to give it that. It's a very, very nice snug fit. The sides are good. There's no chipping on the lacquer either. It's, it's very, very nice fit and finished that is. In all fairness, the lacquer itself is really, really good. It's got weird blemishes all over it, but I don't think that's... Um, uh, the guitar's fault or Harley Benton's fault. That, that looks to me like somebody's just abused the guitar, sadly. Okay, we're back together. Um... Gonna roughly do the pickups. Like I say, this is a top loading Telecaster, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good fun to uh, string up. Let's find some strings. What we got? Oh, let's try these. Uh, my friend Mike gave me these strings to try, Echo strings. And again, I do apologise that everything's in reverse, people too, but I uh, I just wanted to keep an eye. They're just cheapo strings, but they'll give me a good idea of what the guitar's like. And if if it feels really, really good, then what I'll do is I'll restring it with some Diodarios. But for now, for cutting the nut, making sure everything's fine, well, we're just gonna use these. And they are nines, these, so. I can't imagine these strings are really that great, to be honest with you, but I, I, I could be pleasantly surprised. No, they're not great. Um, they'll be okay though. For me to get this guitar intonated, get the nut cut, 
they'll do they'll do the job. I need to sharpen my scissors. Okay, and then cut through. Come on, open up. There you go, good boy. Okay, a string. Moving on. We're getting there. We're getting there, Pooh Tube. We really are. I'm hoping my hunger will uh, stay away until I finish now, because I really want to get this finished. I don't want to have to really stop now. I'm determined to uh, get nibbles later. I want to get this guitar finished. It's cleaned up really nicely, uh, to be fair. Sometimes you get guitars and they don't, they don't, they just don't clean up, they're just a mess. But um, this one's cleaned up really well. That fretboard looks so much better as well than it did. The uh, horrible dry white looking finish was atrocious, it really was. Wow, these strings are really wound up. D string. It's all very exciting this part. I think people do. <laughs> I've given up on the scissors. I'm just tearing into these these things. Uh, okay, come on. Okay, I don't really know. Like I say, when, when I got this guitar, like I said my sister was given this guitar by a friend of hers, and when I got it, I, I picked it up last night. And when I got it last, uh, the, the strings were just like atrocious. They were all rusty. They weren't strings you really wanted to play on. Uh, so all I did basically was like plug it in, made sure it worked, and that's all I've done. And then the rest I was planning to do today once I got home from a dentist's. And uh, I didn't plan to do it on live stream, but uh, I'm kind of glad I did. And hope, 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 hopefully there's something interesting uh, in this video. <laughs> Well, stream. Key string. Oh, uh, madam. Like I say, these strings would be good for me to just be able to uh, cut the nut, get the action right there, uh, and get it intonated. And then, like I say, if the guitar feels really, really good, um, because it wants to be good, it does. You can feel it in the guitar, it wants to be played. Um, bless its heart, it weighs more than an elephant on steroids. So it's not gonna be played a great deal by whoever whoever ends up with this guitar. But um, it's, it wants to be, it wants to be. Like I say, I have a, I have a weakness for instruments. I always like to, I, I can't give up on these things very easily. I have to, I have to get them to live if I can. I hate the idea of just a guitar being thrown away. It just feels weird. And I've actually had to do that one time, I, I, I got given a guitar a long time ago. It was a Marlin Sidewinder. And um, I tried and tried and tried and tried to get that guitar to work. But I, I just couldn't do it, and it, it, it was horrible. I had to literally take the guitar to the tip and throw it in a in a big skip. And it broke my heart. <laughs> Absolutely horrible thing to do. It feels horrific. These things don't belong in skips, they really don't. Okay. Get up on the saddle. Okay, we're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna pull the string tight and then go up one, two, machine heads, pull it back down, loop it over, pull that tight, throw that bit up in the air, and windy, windy, windy. There we go, we have one string. Uh, where are they? There they are. Ah, the strength. The Simpson. All right, moving along. A string. Again, usual thing, move up two, pull back down, wrap around the top, pull that bit up, and wind. And then cut this bit off. 
because I don't want to get stabbed in the face. Or it can break off and go into my eye, whatever. Evil way! Get away from me, you dastardly spiky thing, you! Dave's losing his mind, he's starting to get hungry. And it's, uh, it's a race against Dave's stomach now to get this guitar uh, strung. Come on! There we go, another string on. G string, the rudest of all strings. Stuck under the string tree. Uh, this guitar did have two string trees, but I've taken one off because uh, you don't need it. I understand two string trees, but for me, I don't like them. Like I say, whoever ends up with this guitar, the string tree will be included with it. If they want to put it back on, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, moving along. Oh, that's gone over there. I don't want to go over there, is it? The G string wanted to be a B string there, people with a tube, that's what a uh, weird thing happens. It's like, no G string, that's not your slot. Bad, bad string, naughty. Okay. Okay, B, B, the B and high E strings, I always put more winds on, because they have tendencies to slip. So, I pull them back, the B string I pull back to the A, and then, uh, hang on a minute, and then, actually I might put it back to the E, do I, no, sorry, I'm being an idiot, I don't even know my own thing. So when I put the B string in, I put it back to the low E string, and then wrap it round. I just like to have more winds on the B string than I do, and the high E string than I do any other string, and uh, there we go, spot on. Just in case it slips. Which I don't, which I kind of feel these strings might anyway. And I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. Anyway, high E string. I, I like quite a few wraps with the high E. Uh, so that's... Get in your saddle, you. There's not a lot of string on this. And pull it down. That goes to E to E, and then wrap around the top. Throw it in the air and wind like a madman. So invariably my E A D G strings have one wrap over the top, two wraps below. The B and high E have one above and then three below. That's correct, right? Yep. Happy days. Okay, we're done. So we've got it strung up. String alignment doesn't look too bad. I think we can get the string alignment a bit better, people with the tubes. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to slacken off the neck screws a little bit, but ha about, uh, half a turn each. Not loads, and I'm going to pull the neck over. I don't think it will go though, because that neck pocket's super tight. No, it's not going to go. Okay, no worries. Okay. Now the neck pocket's too tight to let it shift over. So the string alignment is the string alignment. Uh, it's not horrible. Um, can I do it while it's here? No, it's not going to go. Okay, no worries. It's worth a try. Uh, so we have all the strings on. They're all in their sock, in their little places. That's all good. And they said sockets. You ever heard of a string socket? I never have. Okay. Oops. 
Okay, now you stretch them in a bit. You've always got to be careful stretching high e, uh, the high E string on a set of nines because I have broke them in the past by being a bit overly vigorous with the stretch. These strings actually feel really good. I've got to be honest. Close enough for now. Okay, so... Okay, even with the shimming, the action's like a million miles high. So, let's try and rectify that. That is not a happy action. Let's put it that way. Lower that down. Okay, so that's too low at this point in time. Where's my little gauge? Okay, one sec. Getting there, people too. We are getting there. Yeah, it's about spot on there. Okay, so now I need to get the other strings in alignment a bit. Uh, something I've started doing as well, people tube is um, I no longer have my weird, crazy uh, setup anymore on my guitar strings. I used to have it so the G, uh, the G uh, from the G string, the B string was higher than that, and then the the uh, uh, B string was up from there, and everything would kind of ramp up. But I don't do that anymore. I actually radius the things now. Okay, I've gone the wrong way. Sad boy. I'm expecting fret out. <laughs> I really am. But we will see. Uh, when setting your action as well, always do it in the playing position. Don't do it this way. You don't want to do it horizontally. It wants to be like this because that's how you're going to play it. And when you lay things down, they'll tend to be a bit different. Okay, that is actually mental. That that is so easy to play. A little bit higher. Let me bring up that string again. I've gone the wrong way on the G string. Peak on. And down you go. Okay, B string up. B string down. <laughs> B string down. Um, this is riveting. Absolutely riveting. Okay, A string's a bit too low. Spot on, okay. Okay, people, too, this guitar is amazing. It literally plays itself. The nut's not good, though. <laughs> that is, um, that is not good. So let's do that. So nut now. So we're getting there, though. We are nearly, 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 nearly there. So. Nut slotting files, absolute godsends. Okay, so I need a 42, do I have, yes, there's a 42. Okay, so let's cut these nut slots. And also, when, when you're cutting a nut slot, you don't want to do it straight, it wants to be slightly angled. Um, 
Otherwise you get that sitaring effect that drives people up the wall. And to test uh, string height uh, with this, press down the third fret on the string you're doing and there should be very minimal movement at the first fret. So you press the first fret down. If the string's moving quite a lot, it, it needs to come down more, which is what's going on here. And be slow. You don't want to get too over overzealous with it and uh, go too far. Because then you need a new nut. Uh, where's my paintbrush? It's right in front of me. I'm blind. Spot on. Right, so that's low E. Uh, I need a 32 now for the A. What we got? There we go. Move on to the A string. Mm, slipped. Spot on. Not fast. I'm just going to take a little bit more out of that low E. I'm not... Where's the 42 gone? I've lost the 42. There it is. I'm going to take a little bit more out. Spot on. Okay, so D string. D string doesn't need a lot, but it could do a little bit coming out of it. So 24. That's spot on. Yeah, I've kind of gone a bit too low on the A string. But we're okay. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not uh, sitaring. So we're okay. Okay. So G string now. Sixteen. How much do I need to take off the G? Tiniest bit off the G. I've got sixteen. I'll say that's literally it. That is literally it. Okay. B string. Uh, An eleven. Which I don't think I actually have. I have a 10, that'll do. Oh, where are you? There you are. Don't want. Spot on. Um, probably come out a bit more, actually, haven't I? B. Right, so high E now, so I just need a nine, which is somewhere. <laughs> I know it's here. No, I don't have a nine. I'll use the ten. It'll be fine. Cleans out the nut slot as well. Yeah, perfect. Spot on. Right, now I don't need to do any more than that. That's easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, so that's nut slotting done as well. So that should feel way better doing open chords up here. Uh, where did I put the lid for these? Ah, oh, it's there. I can't see it. I'm blind, I tell you. He's a blind man. Okay, I really need to tidy up. Uh, <laughs> That nut really needs I really need to super glue that nut in people with the tube. But we're there, we have a guitar. 
So now what I need to do is test the frets to see how they are. Oh, I need to just check the neck. The neck should be fine. It doesn't feel weird. Yeah, neck spot on. Tiny bit of relief in the neck. Uh, it just like it just comes up a little bit. Not nothing major. Just a tiny little bit. So now I'm going to do the fret test to see if there's any dead frets on the guitar. I'm also going to dust off that nut dust. Who uh? Who uh, madam? Cool. So no dead frets when bending. A bit of a one there, but it's not too bad. It's tolerable. It's very tedious. The fun never stops. Jobs are good on people too. We have a guitar and it feels great. It's sadly impossibly heavy. Ugh. But it lives and it breathes and uh, we're going to plug it in quickly because we're done, believe it or not. That's, that's it. We, are, we have a guitar. So I'm just going to quickly plug it in uh, to an amp and uh, play you out. Well, let's just see what it sounds like. For, oh, I need to do pickups actually. So we're not 100% we're not done for you tube just yet. I need to get the pickup heights adjusted. I do need to give it a final polish as well at some point. This is just kind of like a once over to get rid of my gross fingerprints. Um, I might, might steal this guitar, you know, I quite like it. I love the finish. I love the blonde uh, see-through finish. I'm not a big fan of the, um, the pearl scratch plate at all. Um, in all fairness, I'd be very tempted to... Uh, make the scratch plate silver and have it like a Jeff Buckley Telecaster. I know Jeff's was kind of, uh, was yellow. It's like a, a um, it was like a black guard, but uh, I think it looked quite cool with a silver scratch plate, just like Jeff's. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, Pure Tube? Should I cover the scratch plate in silver, silver tape? <laughs> Interesting, useless Dave fact. Telecasters, I always set the pickups quite high in relation to, like, say, a strap. I need to clean those thing, uh, the machine heads quicker. They're gross. There we go. Whoa, I nearly got copyright, didn't I? Okay, well, look at the mess. Absolutely pigsty. There we go, though. Tell you what, it's not the same guitar it was when I started this. Uh, let's just tighten that strap button in. There we go. Okay, uh, right, let's get an amp going. There you go. Let's see what, see what, see what it sounds like. Let's see if we can get these pickups uh, balanced out. Not sure how good this will sound, people of YouTube, just been uh, room audio, right? but uh, 
Like I say, I think I might do a full review on this at some point in the future. Oh, my knees. God, it's not fun getting older. Oh. Okay. <laughs> After here, people tube, and again, I'm, I do apologize, you won't be able to hear this particularly well. But um, what I'm after here for the sound is I don't want too much low end, uh, and I want a little bit more brightness out of that neck pickup because the neck pickup on this guitar is really dark. So, what I'm doing is I'm angling it. So, the treble side, the B, uh, B, uh, E, and G side is a lot higher now than the, the, the bass side. <laughs> Matter about being in tune at this point in time. I'm not. I'm. I'm after the sound. I'm not after the tuning. There's a little bit too much boom. So let's go to a bridge pickup. It's pretty much spot on, to be honest with you. I think that. The end got up a bit more. I'm going to drop the bass side a little bit. What's the middle? So the bridge pickup is a little bit weaker than the neck pickup at this point in time, so it's going to bring it up a smidgen. Not too much though, because we ain't we ain't got much left in movement. How's that doing? I'm going to do is see if it's microphonic with the pickup. So I've got the distortion on the amp. Uh, we're going through the Boss Guitar Artist, by the way, people uh, And uh, basically, I've got loads of distortion. Let's see if it whistles. Yeah, it does. Net pickup doesn't know, and neither does the middle position, but the bridge pickup does. Does it get, does it get in the way when you palm you? I'll take it, people, too. I've got to say, I, I need to give it a final clean up. But it feels great. It really does. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know, uh, how does that sound? Is that okay? Does that sound, can you hear that okay, people, with you? One last thing to check is the intonation. I'm just going to hear that. Sounds good enough to me. Yep, I'll, I'll buy that. The intonation actually did look quite fine from the get-go, uh, looking at it the way it was. I was kind of thinking, that looks pretty much spot on to me, and it, and it is. The cheap eco strings, these ones, where's the thing? Those strings, they feel great. I'll tell you what, I mean, for cheap strings, they feel absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a snarly little beast, it wants to go. <laughs>
So there you go, people. Too. This is the Harley Benton Standard Series. Uh... I don't know what it says there. <laughs> There's like a little bit of writing in that top bit of the uh, thingy. God, that is rough. Um, I might have to go around this headstock with some sandpaper at some point. But uh, it's very, very rough. The fretboard feels great. The frets, uh, it, no sharp edges on the side feel great. The frets are great. This thing basically plays itself. It's so easy to play. It's a bit, bit mental. You can do immense bends on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it holds tune, kind of. Uh, it's not going to hold tune exactly perfectly right now because I haven't tuned it, I haven't stretched the strings enough. But it feels great. Like I say, it's a top loading bridge, it sounds great. Pickups sound good, the electrics are good. It's a shame that the back of the bridge pickups are a little bit monophonic, but you know, it is what it is. The neck pickups like it as well. So is the middle, but it's, it's nothing It's nothing too bad. I, I've definitely heard worse. So anyway, that's the end of this live stream. I want to get some food because I'm starving. I'm so happy this guitar came out well. Um, yeah, I'm really happy about it. I don't understand that volute at the bottom of the neck. Look at that. Look how big that is. Because when you're down here, you just feel a big block of wood. It's a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, regards to that. This guitar is really, really nice. I'm going to do a video on it, people with YouTube, in the future. It won't be for a while yet, but I will get uh, to do a review on it. I'm just going to take, make sure these are tight down. That's the infinite one in it, yeah. Infinity screw. There's always one. I'll tell you what, let's just fix that now before I go. So, quick way to fix an infinity screw, if you can ever get them out. Is I tell you, I bought this years ago. It's just a big box of uh, bamboo skewers, a big bag, so I say. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it in the hole and break it off, flatten it down with a screwdriver, so it's in there, and then put the screw back in. Easy peasy. Oh, that's better. And that, uh, tight. So no longer any infinity screws. Sounds good unplugged as well, to be honest with you. It's quite a bright sounding Telecaster, but it's really, really nice. I'll say, button net pickups, fantastic. <laughs> Can. You can do it with matches as well, yeah, definitely. Anything wood, stick it in the all, all's well. Um, no euphemisms, please. Anyway, there we go, people. Tube. Uh, the string alignment is a bit squiffy. I wish I could correct that, but I can't because uh, the neck pocket's too tight. And like I say, it, need, it does need a final clean and polish just to get some of the little bits and pieces off it. But we're there. There we, we are. There. Spot on. Happy day. So thank you very much indeed for watching the live stream. Uh, how long has it been? 94 minutes. That's quite a while. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this for what it was. I hope there was something informative in there and, uh, you know, for what it is. Um, I'd say something a bit different. I've got an interesting video coming later on tonight. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again very soon. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now. Thank you very much indeed for watching. And uh, yeah, I should do more live streams like this, shouldn't I? I, quite enjoy I do enjoy them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. See you later.